ChatGPT reached 100 million active users in two months and became the fastest growing consumer app in history. This caused Google to feel an existential threat for the first time in years as ChatGPT can give direct answers to search queries without needing to browse a list of potential results, potentially killing Google's ad business, which currently accounts for 60% of their revenue. In response, Google declared a code red and invited their co-founders back to Google. Sergey Brin started coding again. Microsoft saw this as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to take its share back in the search market. So they invested in ChatGPT and integrated into Bing, its long-dead search engine. This is forcing Google to roll out Lambda, its own chatbot based on a large language model, in order to compete with Microsoft and OpenAI's partnership. Welcome to the war for the future of search. Microsoft has announced the integration of OpenAI's GPT-4 into Bing, branding it as the new Bing. The AI-enhanced Bing has a new chat option in the menu bar, alongside search, which allows users to toggle between the two modes. Upon selecting the chat option, users are greeted with a chat interface that provides three suggestions and a disclaimer, which closely resembles the interface of ChatGPT. In the search mode, we can see results from Bing Chat next to the traditional search results. I saw some mixed opinions about it. Some people love it, some people hate it. I find it a little bit distracting, but functionally it's great to have all this information from Bing Chat next to traditional search screen. The new Bing will have access to current information from the web and it will also clearly state its sources on the answers it gives, enabling users to verify the information. Bing is capable of handling complex tasks that usually require manual effort, such as generating meal or travel plans and writing code. The AI's ability to comprehend and respond to natural language queries also means that Bing can handle creative tasks, such as writing a rhyming poem or creating a short story. Bing can engage in a conversational exchange with users, providing a more human-like research experience. Google, on the other hand, responded with BART, a new experimental conversational service powered by Lambda, a large language model. Sundar Pichai mentioned that BART is currently in external testing phase with trusted testers. The word experimental was chosen specifically to prepare the public for the potential of wrong information or biased responses that may come from BART. BART's large language model is a lightweight version of Lambda that requires significantly less computing power. It's understandable why they choose a lighter model to start with. It has been estimated that cost of operating ChatGPT is roughly $1 to $3 million per month, with each query requiring approximately $0.03. Cents. At Google, serving 10 billion queries per day would result in an annual cost of $110 billion, which would not be financially feasible to sustain. When we look at the user interface of BART, it looks similar to ChatGPT, the result page does not have sources or citations, at least for now. To provide feedback, there are thumbs up and thumbs down buttons. The refresh button allows you to rerun your query, while the check it button takes you to a direct or relevant source on the web related to your question. Here is a quick comparison test between ChatGPT and BART's responses for the same exact prompt. Which one do you think did a better job? Write down in the comments. Both companies take a hybrid approach, combining a traditional search experience with chat. It makes sense since search is still good at head queries like people, weather, locations, or movies. The all-time highest traffic for Google search was during the FIFA World Cup final as people search for scores. Large language models such as ChatGPT excel at handling tail queries while also offering incredible creative opportunities. It makes sense to have a hybrid approach combining traditional search with chat-based quick answers. Some people prefer direct answer, a quick response to what they are searching for, and some people like the research experience. 
not the destination but journey. While researching for something, they want to discover new information and new people, and that's totally fine. It's too soon to determine whether traditional search and chat-based search will eventually merge. Only time will tell. Everybody is asking the same question. Where are we going with all these developments? AI arms race between tech giants will accelerate further. We will see better and more capable large multi-models combining not just written text but also images, audio and video like Palm model from Google. In the coming months, the scalability of large language models will be an important issue given the massive computational resources they require that can only be supplied by tech giants like Google or Microsoft. Another challenge lies in the need to continually and intelligently update these models with the latest information available online, which is constantly changing. Finding cost-effective ways to do this will be an important challenge to overcome. Effects on websites depend on search traffic will be catastrophic. You will ask for recipe, you will get the recipe, you won't need to visit the recipe website. It's clear that this will happen based on past experiences such as when Google introduced featured snippets to search. Some websites reported a 20% decrease in traffic as a result. The former director of AI at Tesla mentioned GitHub Copilot in his tweet saying that already 80% of code he is writing on a daily basis had been written by AI. Guess who owns GitHub? Yes, Microsoft. It's hard to call a multi-billion dollar company an underdog, but Microsoft is giving me that same feeling I got when watching Morocco reach to semi-finals of the World Cup last year. And I love underdogs. Generative capabilities of these models will grow rapidly until to a moment when it becomes self-inventing itself. We know that before 2010, training compute grew in line with Moore's law, doubling roughly every 20 months. Since the advent of deep learning in the early 2010s, the scaling of training compute has accelerated, doubling approximately every six months. Based on these facts, it's safe to say that eventually search engines will transition into answer engines. Answer engines will transition into hyper-advanced personal assistants accessible from our mixed reality headsets and augmented reality glasses. People will start hiring these models as employees. They never sleep, never get sick or tired. And they will be able to do knowledge processing work better than us, sooner or later. In the future, Specialize multi-models that focus on individual domains, or what I like to refer as artificial domain intelligences, will begin to interact with each other, as well as with data from robotic solutions operating in both real-world and simulated environments. This will be the point when discussions about artificial general intelligence will become much more serious and prominent. Once we reach the AGI, artificial superintelligence level won't take too long to reach. Over the next decade, I believe that cost of intelligence will rapidly decrease to almost zero, leading to the democratization of intelligence and creative power. As a knowledge worker, I reflect on the future of my career and acknowledge that it may not be relevant in 20 years. Despite this, I remain optimistic and eager for the new opportunities that will come with the rapid advancement of artificial intelligence. I'm fully committed to embracing this change and exploring all that it will offer. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about ChatGPT and artificial intelligence, you can click here.